The Pelicans have agreed to finally trade Anthony Davis to the Lakers. Now, here's the compensation package. Everybody's wondering, mm -hmm. what would they give up? Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram. Remember, Ingram has the blood clots in his arm, yep. so that's an issue. Josh Hart and three first-round picks. <laughs> The 2019-2020 Los Angeles Lakers offseason began with high hopes when they acquired Anthony Davis from the Pelicans in a trade. The move had been anticipated for months, but to finally get the deal done after some turmoil in the Lakers' front office, it had to be satisfying. The pairing of LeBron James with Anthony Davis seemed to be the perfect fit, and the only question now was who was coming in free agency to join the two superstars in LA in pursuit of the Lakers' 17th championship. As of last night, into the wee hours of this morning, into this morning, I got word the Los Angeles Lakers are to be taken seriously. They will be a team that's strongly considered to go that for Kawhi Leonard to arrive to. Kawhi Leonard was coached by Steve Fisher. Steve Fisher's got a connection to Rob Palenka. Rob Palenka's been working that angle. LeBron and Kawhi have a very good relationship. They've been texting throughout the year. If the Lakers were able to also sign Kawhi Leonard, the team would use up their remaining cap space and only have the ability to spend on minimal contracts and the room exemption. But adding Kawhi would guarantee that the Lakers would be the hands-down favorite to win the championship and create a trio the likes the league may have never seen. Could three of the top five players in the league end up on the same team together? Free agency would begin on June 30th, and five days later, the league would get their answer. Well, Kawhi Leonard has made his decision just minutes ago. Our Adrian Wojnarowski reporting that Kawhi Leonard is going to join the Clippers here in Los Angeles. He's informed the runners-up teams of his plans. That would be the Lakers and the Raptors. Leonard coming off an NBA title with the Raptors in his only season in Toronto. Southern California native headed back home here to play for the Los Angeles Clippers. Not only that, right. the Clippers have also made a deal to acquire Paul George from the Oklahoma City Thunder, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari heading to Oklahoma City along with a boatload of draft picks. Yeah. We're standing by to talk to Adrian Wojnarowski. Who broke that part of the story. And also, this is what we thought. If Kawhi Leonard would go to the Clippers, which he says he's going to the Clippers, he'd bring others with him. So Kawhi Leonard chose to play for the Clippers which left a bad taste in a lot of Lakers fans' mouths. The way he conducted his business was seen by some as unprofessional. While the majority of the free agent pool waited upon the Kawhi Domino to fall first before committing to teams, the Lakers had thought they had Kawhi in the bag. But in reality, it appears that Leonard was stalling to allow the Clippers more time to maneuver and bring in another star to play alongside Kawhi. When the news broke, the NBA world was stunned. The Lakers now had to move on to plan B and act swiftly. And swiftly they did, going on a shopping spree of NBA players to fill their roster quickly. All right, all right. Um, Kawhi has made his decision. Seems like the announcement is out. It's time for me to make my announcement. I would just like to announce and proudly let everyone know I'm excited for the next two years that I will be teaming up with my new teammates in LA. Los Angeles Lakers. Um, so, you know, looking forward to playing with those guys. And Woj is reporting DeMarcus Cousins has indeed agreed to a one-year, three-and-a-half million-dollar deal with the Lakers. And this is going to be an even broader Pelicans reunion. Boogie in the brow plus...
Brooks, more breaking news as well. DeMarcus Cousins, as Nabil just said, has a torn ACL. Again, DeMarcus Cousins with a torn ACL. That's what his agent told Adrian Morjanowski. This happened while working out in Las Vegas on Monday. Apparently, he bumped knees with another player. The four-time All-Star apparently met with Laker doctors in L.A. today to undergo testing, and now the result as many feared. Before the season could even begin, DeMarcus Cousins tore his ACL in a practice. Cousins would most likely miss the entire season, and the Lakers would now have to fill the massive void at the center position. What happened next could only happen in Hollywood. Making news, Dwight Howard's going to get one with the Lakers. Woj reporting that a buyout with Memphis has been completed. He's going to be back in purple and gold once again. He did spend one year with the Lakers back in 2012-2013. The Lakers now had a complete roster, and they were ready to pursue their 17th championship. Opening night was upon us, and fittingly enough, the opponents would be the other tenants of the Staples Center, the Los Angeles Clippers. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George would go up against LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And so it began. Welcome Clipper fans to the game tonight. It's going to be a great season. The Lakers jumped out to a big lead early, but the Clippers would not go quietly and battled back. The game would continue to go back and forth for three and a half quarters. Mismatch down low, you want it. LeBron, triple team. Here comes McGee. Three, three, good foul. Kai Shannon will finish. No. Picked up by Davis. Here comes James. Runs and the sledgehammer. Danny Green would begin to heat up to keep the Lakers close. Green, he's run four of four this quarter. Five of five. By Danny Green. Green, three. But the Clippers would begin to pull away. Championship, what's your offseason like? You said it's short. He did say the transition was very Another rebound for Beverly. He's got nine of them. The Clippers would win by 10 to drop the Lakers to 0-1. The Lakers' next seven games looked difficult. Versus Utah, versus Charlotte, versus Memphis, at Dallas, at San Antonio, at Chicago, versus Miami. It would be crucial for the Lakers to get off to a good start and win a lot of these games. Seven, but good job, Val.
but he is a three-point threat. LeBron with the basketball. Here he goes! All the way! Look out! He stretched the imagination. Only hit 100 points. Oh, that's eight! A great start to the fourth for Kyle Kuzma. Good rebound. Slay! Slam! Dunk! And the Lakers are only down by four! Four quarter action for the Lakers fans. Kobe White. Fucked out of bounds by Dwight Howard! The last Chicago bucket was the Fournette three. Count and Count it! The Lakers have the lead! And one! In on Otto Porter Jr. LeBron in very deep. LBJ. Kick it. Corner. Anthony Davis. He's got it! There's the triple double. LeBron the triple double. The three. All three of those should be on one banner up there. Oh, AC! The Lakers had won seven straight games and erased the memory of the opening day loss to the Clippers. The Lakers were now 7-1 and, and were on top of the Western Conference. One of the unsung heroes during the winning streak was Alex Caruso. The Lakers coaching staff called upon Caruso in the second halves of games to spark the Lakers. His defensive tenacity and surprising athletic ability helped propel the Lakers to close victories repeatedly during the streak. Alex Caruso grew up in Texas and played college basketball for Texas A&M from 2012 to 2016. He went undrafted and played in the NBA Summer League for the Philadelphia 76ers in July of 2016. The Oklahoma City Thunder liked what they saw from Alex and they signed him in September. He ended up finishing the year playing for the Oklahoma City Blue of the D-League, or what is now commonly known as the G-League, the developmental league of the NBA. Caruso did not get to play in the NBA during the 2016-2017 season. So he returned to play Summer League in 2017, this time with the Los Angeles Lakers. Lonzo Ball had just been drafted by the Lakers and was the star of the Summer League team. But Caruso had several productive games and even started in place of the injured Lonzo Ball in the Summer League Championship game, leading the Lakers to victory. The Lakers rewarded Caruso with a two-way contract on July 13, 2017. A two-way contract meant that Alex could play a limited number of games in the NBA, as well as playing on the Lakers' developmental team. Caruso kept working on his game and decided to bulk up before the 2019-2020 season. A bunch of Photoshop memes began to surface all over the internet. Even though the muscles were photo-enhanced, the NBA decided to drug test Alex Caruso anyway. Alex Caruso became a fan favorite because of his tireless work ethic earning such playful nicknames as the Bald Mamba, the Bald Eagle, and the Caruso, the latter for his ability to do this. After a tough loss at home to Toronto on November 10th, the Lakers were still 7-2, tied for first in the Western Conference, and they were about to embark on one of their most impressive streaks of the season.
flip and fast break off. Foot can't get it to the boat. And JaVel McGee, good pursuit, beautiful pass, James. You are just a puffer of information. 38% from downtown. Here comes LBJ! Caruso. Attack. Wow, baby! He was thinking about it, wasn't he? Now he steps back, falls back in. Has the Parker in there. He's blocked by McGee. Three on one. Danny Green lob to LBJ! LeBron again! Bryant in attendance tonight. Lakers were on a 10 game winning streak. With a record of 17 and 2, they led the Western Conference. But here came the Dallas Mavericks, and the Lakers got a dose of superstar Luka Doncic. December got off to a rough start with the loss to the Dallas Mavericks. Now the Lakers had to regroup and get ready for a very difficult road trip at Denver, at Utah, and at Portland.
And the Lakers just together. kept on winning. We're tied at nine. Or Caldwell Pope got caught. Somehow finds Lake. Kirstie shooting exactly the same from the field. Six out of nine. Anthony Davis takes the other way. And get the trail. LeBron trying to bully his way in with one hand. Lakers won seven in a row again and increased their road winning streak to 14 games. A lot of the credit goes to the Lakers head coach, Frank Vogel. Lakers just continue to win basketball games. They've had 14 straight road wins. 14 straight road wins. The latest victim were the Hawks. Can we give Frank Vogel some credit? Because I feel like Frank, can you yeah, give I can. Frank Vogel Yeah, that's credit. my guy. People say I look like him. I've always told people that Rob Palenka was doing a really good job of putting that team together. Mm. Frank Vogel's arrival to the Lakers was not ideal. The Lakers originally tried to hire Tyron Lue to be the next head coach of the Lakers. Lue did not like the idea of a shorter contract, however, and decided to move on late in the negotiating process. The Lakers moved on to offer Frank Vogel the head coaching job, with the caveat that he also allowed the Lakers to hire Jason Kidd as an assistant. While we are talking about coaching hires, the Lakers have reached a three-year deal with Frank Vogel to be their head coach. Well, reporting the length of term there, Vogel made back-to-back -back conference finals appearances as Pacers head coach in 2013 and 14, of course, who beat him in those conference finals. Yeah, Bron. There we go. He also agreed to let Jason Kidd be part of his coaching staff, which was reportedly a point of contention in the Lakers' talks with Ty Lue. At the end of the day, when people want to know how did Frank Vogel become the coach, well, the Lakers, they showed up with less than market value, less years, and they wanted control of your staff. Many believed the Lakers were in fact grooming Kidd to be their next head coach, and Vogel was just a placeholder until he was ready. The media also painted Vogel as a defensive-minded coach only. They thought he might struggle incorporating a modern offensive system that would be suitable to today's style of basketball. Despite being their second choice and despite the media's perception of the Lakers coaching staff, Vogel took the job. Frank Vogel began his career as the head video coordinator for the Boston Celtics, a job that he held for five years. In 2001, he was promoted to assistant coach. In 2002, he was the assistant coach for the Philadelphia 76ers. In 2005, he became an advanced scout for the Los Angeles Lakers. And then he moved on to Washington to become the Wizards advanced scout until 2007. From there, he went on to become an assistant for the Indiana Pacers and was named interim coach for the Pacers in 2011, a job in which he kept permanently until 2016. With the Pacers, Vogel's teams were consistently battling LeBron James' Miami Heat in playoff matchups. His star player at that time was Paul George. When the Lakers hired Vogel to be their new head coach, Frank was excited to have LeBron James on his team. 
Vogel knew that even though Kawhi had spurned the Lakers to play for the Clippers, he still had LeBron James and Anthony Davis, two of the top five players in the NBA. With the Lakers sitting at 24-3, Vogel more than exceeded expectations. One of the most obvious traits that the Lakers possessed was team chemistry. The team seemed to genuinely love playing with each other, and Vogel was at least partly responsible for that. Vogel also made very good in-game adjustments at halftime of games, and the Lakers' record was indicative of that. The Lakers had not yet dealt with much adversity, but Vogel's coaching skills would be put to the test as the Lakers finally hit their first bump in the road. It began in Indiana. Anthony Davis had to sit out with an injury, and the Pacers proved to be a little bit too much for the Lakers. Then in Milwaukee, playing against the team with the best record in the league, the Lakers again came up short. And then the Nuggets thumped the Lakers without LeBron James, who rested with an injury on their own home floor. And then there was the rematch with the Clippers, and a chance to avenge their opening day loss. Rajon Rondo gets off the bench, most likely for one of the bigs. Leonard ties the game. Kawhi Leonard. James Caldwell Pope back out to James. Beverly all over. Six seconds remaining. James step back, knocked out of his hands, deflected out of bounds. But Kawhi Leonard torched the Lakers, and Patrick Beverly's late block of a LeBron James three-point attempt sealed their fate. The Lakers would lose four in a row and face doubts from the media. But I have to bring up that the Clippers beat the Lakers again in the regular season. And I've said, I think the Lakers are built to be better in the regular season. But man, I like the Clippers taking time off for the postseason. The Lakers can't beat the Clippers if LeBron plays poorly. He yeah. played poorly on Christmas. He played poorly the first game of the year. I do not think he will play poorly four times in seven games in the playoffs, considering he's averaging four bad playoff games every four seasons over the last 15 years, so I'll take my chances with it. The Lakers needed to regroup. They were still on top of the Western Conference with a record of 24-7. and They only had two games left before the new year, and they were against two good teams, at Portland and at home versus Dallas. Hindsight 2020, a look back at the 2019-2020 Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers get back to winning. Dwight Howard makes amends. The NBA mourns the loss of Kobe Bryant. And COVID-19 puts the brakes on the Lakers championship run. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be notified when part 2 releases soon. Thank you for watching on the Guide Talk Network.